Welcome to this Thursday edition of Coach Go North Bay News, a truly local television. I'm Clark Heipel. The Ontario Northland Transportation Commission has taken the offensive in an ongoing labour contract dispute with its unionized employees. Nearly 200 workers at the North Bay Refurbishment Yard are in the second day of what the union is calling an illegal strike. ONTC carman Mike LaBelle is one of the 195 employees currently not working at the shops. He brings us through how he was informed of the situation on Wednesday morning. When we came in, all the man doors were locked. And there was one big door that was open, so everybody started going through there. I asked the supervisor why the man doors were locked. They wouldn't tell us. So we all got dressed and got ready for work, and they came down and told us, you're out. So it's very disrespectful on our part disrespectful to the vets and what's on the contract contracting out we're not going to tolerate it. ONTC President and Chief Executive Officer Karina Moore says the lockout which officially begins Saturday morning is a necessary step in order to reach an agreement. We've been negotiating with the union for over a year now and we were really hopeful that the union leadership would have urgency to conclude these negotiations. We have some very good opportunities on the table right now that require a collective agreement in place. Um, and we presented our final offers on Friday and asked them to take their offers to the membership for a vote. And on Tuesday, they declined to do that. So if the lockout officially begins on Saturday, why are the employees not working until then? The ONTC says in a release they have advised the employees that they are not required to work during the 72-hour notice period. Moore added to this by saying... Well, I think it's important to note that we've provided the notice, but we've provided full pay to the employees during the 72-hour notice period. Brian Stevens is Unifor's National Rail Director, and he maintains that the legal process of the 72-hour window was not followed by ONTC management. In law, there's a requirement for the union to notify the employer 72 hours of any action if we were going to take a strike. And the same holds true for the employer, and that's to try and build up a little bit of pressure to get to a deadline. So, uh, so in order uh, for the requirements of the law to meet, there really is a status quo requirement for 72 hours and the employer hasn't done that. So the employer has actually told our employees that they can't uh, come to work, they can't, do, they can't work uh, while they were supposed to, and uh, it, uh, it's a violation of the law. So uh, in terms of we believe, so we filed the complaint and we anticipate hearing sometime later today what, uh, what the outcome is from the board. The first day of the unofficial lockout happened to be Remembrance Day. Was this purely coincidence? Many members were in, I talked to them, they were in disgust that it was on Remembrance Day, that they were locked out on that day. What's your response to that? You know what, I'm, I'm disappointed that anybody would um, compare Remembrance Day and the wonderful things that our veterans have done for us to give us this freedom, uh, comparing it to a labour disruption. This has everything to do with um, the decline from the union of being able to hold that vote with their membership. Yesterday was a tactical move on their part, pure and simple. They knew the federal government was shut down. They knew what their actions was, was illegal. And that's why they decided to do it yesterday because they gained the advantage that they figured that the Canada Industrial Relations Board would be closed yesterday. Management and the union are scheduled to meet on Friday and a federal conciliation and mediation officer will be present.